Is it possible to scientifically prove a universe independent of consciousness? Is it possible to scientifically prove an observer independent universe? I think n probably not. I'm not in the sense that that because uh, by definition, yes, yes, for yes. even empirical yes. Uh, yes. observation, you need because an observer. I, you could always come up with some kind of skeptical arguments. Of course, in, in, in theory of knowledge, there are skeptical arguments like, you know, for all that we know, we could be brains in the vat. Maybe some evil scientist just, you know, did an operation and set it up and, and, uh, and, and is feeding information to the brain in the vat so that it, it looks to us that we are sitting here, but actually we are there. And, and I think the, uh, you know, many philosophers say, yeah, well, for all that we know, we might be uh, brains in a vat, most probably we are not. So, you know, we're, let's not worry about that. But if the, this world is a proje projection right. or a production of our brain, as some materialists say, right. then it's a hallucination. Yes, yes, right? that's interesting because... Uh, and if the observer doesn't exist, as some people like Daniel Dennett say, that the, you know, the, the, the observing self is not there, then if the observing self is not there, then... The universe is not there. It seems like a very strange statement to well, make. Well, I guess you know, Dennett might say that the self is there in some kind of fictional, fictional sense. That that and a virtual. So is the universe there in a the fictional self? Well, yeah. Well, I guess again, some of these physicalists they would uh, they just assume that the real world does exist. The real world is a physical. better physical assumption. Then. Yes. Yes. I think the. It's I not think, a scientific fact. It's a metaphysical well, assumption. Well, yes. I think. Uh, I think most philosophers would admit that it is a metaphysical assumption, but they think we have good reasons for making, we have valid reasons for making that assumption because the al alternatives are, are too bizarre or, you know, they, it could be. But I think it's, I think you see, if, if we look at in Western philosophy, this skepticism goes all the way back to the antique Greece, but of course it gets in, in some ways strong with, with Descartes and, and, and Hume. And, and I guess in West, Western philosophy, it's sometimes almost like a torture where you're trying to answer to the skeptic. Like, and, and, uh, people yeah, but I think we need a radical kind of accept, uh, skepticism now. Uh, the usual skepticism is, uh, you know, you doubt the ex uh, ex uh, existence of consciousness, but a radical ex a skepticism would doubt the existence of matter. Right, right. Because what but, we call yes. these realists, they're in a sense naive realists because they think perceptual experience is fundamental reality. Right, right. That's again interesting what you're saying because in some ways in, in the West, the tradition for Descartes would say that the thing that we know best is consciousness. And actually like the sentence, I think I exist is something that cannot be wrong. So there's, you can't hope for better knowledge than something that cannot be wrong. Available on CuriosityStream. Watch premium factual shows at curiositystream.com.